welcome to today's video. You guys are expecting a vlog, but today we took the day off and we decided to put up this video instead. So I hope you guys like it. And I know that you guys understand that every once in a while we like to have a lazy day. It may seem like every day is a lazy day for us, but today is an extra lazy day. So today's video, the girls don't know what today's video, but today's video is we are going to be reacting to hate comments. It's one of my favorite videos. What do you guys think? I don't know. They don't know. They don't know. Anyways, we're going to just get right into this video. I'm going to read to you some of our hate comments. I haven't read any of these. It'll be as new for us as it is for you. So someone said, I didn't watch the video, but I'm assuming this is clickbait. And once again, you just found or are riding someone else's horse. So do we do a lot of clickbait? Mom no. does. I don't. I'm Mom not does. part of it. Don't associate me with it. <laughs> Don't associate so Gabby. So do we do clickbait? I don't know. Okay, so basically, I, I I get confused about what people think are clickbait. If it happens in the video, we talk about it in the video, say the actual words in the video. I feel like it's not clickbait. Like I've said before, we can't explain the whole entire video in a title. It's difficult to make a title. We've been vlogging for so many years now. Like it's so hard to think of titles. We have so many repeat titles. I don't know. I don't know how to do titles any differently. We purposely intend to mislead you to the point that there's nothing about what the title says in our video. I don't, I don't think so. But you know, everybody's entitled to their own opinion. Laura, queen of clickbait. Yes, I'm the queen of something. <laughs> Finally, the queen of something. Um, so recently you guys know that we've been talking about how our horse is always off. And when I say off, I don't mean he's always lame. He is not always lame. 90% of Chino's issues are no shoes because he pulls them off. Um, he's had stone bruises. He's had, um, uh, abscess, one abscess since we've had him in almost two years. He's had little teeny tiny minor things that we don't ride him through. But he's also had a couple of things that our vet says that we need to ride him through to strengthen issues. So we definitely don't ever ride Chino lame. And I know that people get confused about his lameness, but someone says, Laura, how about not? And she said it in capital letters. How about not lease or buy? And how about you figure out Chino's is issues? Go get him vetted properly. So what do you think about that, Gabby? Have we been getting him vetted? Yes, we have. We get our horses vetted at the blink of an eye. We get our horses have the vet more often than anybody else because we don't know enough. And I always want to double check. I'm super cautious and... We also have the help of our trainers, but we do go with our vet, we go with our farrier, we go with our massage therapist, and we go with our chiropractor. We do all of those supplemental things, and we do herbs and supplements for our horses, so we definitely do a lot. Uh, we have had him vetted, we've had him x-rayed from a top to bottom, we've had him uh, blood tested, we've had him, we've had so many things, like we've had our vet come and say, well, there's nothing wrong here. <laughs> so we definitely do get him properly vetted and it may not look the same. Vetting here might not look the same as where you are. Um, I might not explain it properly, but trust me, where it comes to when it comes to Chino, we have had him vetted. We are always making sure that he's okay. So uh, someone else says, why does it take, why it took eight people to catch a horse? Because no one knows anything about groundwork. <laughs> Was it our horse? No, nope, not our horse. But is that why we can't catch the horse that you ride? Because no one knows anything about groundwork? The horse oh. runs away before you can even get near Buddy. it. Buddy, yeah, mm -hmm. he runs away. Yeah, not our horse, not our problem. We can't, we can't do groundwork on other people's horses. It's okay, so this one is about me and Penny, you guys. This one is, it feels like you have Penny like a dog. I don't mean anything bad by it, it's just that the seat that you do it like a dog, or maybe she means it's just the fact that you do it like a dog. And yeah, maybe my training, or maybe the way I handle Penny is like a dog. I probably handle the dogs the same way I do my kids. It's just how I love and how I interact. And I know some people get really offended if you don't talk specific um, horse language or if you don't do it a specific way, but Penny understands me and I understand Penny and I think that's what's most important. It's almost like the same person always posting the same mean comments, but this one says absolutely no, no, no. I honestly feel bad for Chino. Instead of being a responsible horse owner and focus on Chino, you throw him a freak into a freaking field, still ride him once in a while without proper vetting, and now moving on to a new horse. God forbid this horse goes lame. Then what, another horse and another? And then she gets really angry and she says, 
for your information, you can't keep buying horses just because one goes lame and Gabby takes lessons on school horses, so why doesn't she keep this horse as a school pony for her once a week lesson at that barn and not buy him and focus on poor Chino? So Gabby, I'm gonna let you handle this. First of all, um, are we focusing on Chino? Are we making a lot of changes? Have we made a lot of changes all summer for Chino? All fall? Yeah. We have a lot of changes coming out. Um, we haven't shared them all with you guys. We have made a million changes. We're going to be making a very uh, informative video very soon next week about Chino and what we're doing for him. But I also want to reiterate that Chino's problems are pulling shoes, flat feet, thin soles. So those are the problems with Chino. He's not always lame most of the time. He doesn't have shoes. And occasionally he has like a sore somewhere that goes away really soon after. Like he'll pull something or stretch something or whatever. We absolutely do more vetting than most people in this area ever do with their horses. And the reason we do that is because we don't know enough and we get help from our trainers, like I said before. Uh, we absolutely do so much vetting. Our horse, Chino's been x-rayed from top to bottom. And the reason that we are so careful with Chino, or it seems like he's lame all the time, is because we're so careful with Chino. We are so extra careful with Chino that most people wouldn't even notice like a problem with Chino, but we are so, we notice every single thing and we follow our vet's direction to the letter and we're working through stuff. And I'm sorry that you guys don't know all the details yet. And it's okay that you don't know all the details yet, but trust me, it's coming. This is a long comment, but I'm gonna read it. Are you guys ready? Um, I never saw this one, but Gabby knows the art of detachment. Gabby, you know the art of detachment. She, what is that? She feels away from her emotions, and she does. She feels away from her emotions. She's intellectually stable. She's emotionally stable, I feel. Uh, probably an air sign like an Aquarius. What's your sign? Bull. I'm an earth sign. She's the bull. <laughs> I'm a Taurus. Because I'm missing a couple emotions there. I feel as if these people feel deeper than anyone. I feel that too. And I don't. I really don't care about it. And the detachment is the defense mechanism of the innate connection with all that is alive and lived. I feel like that too. I feel like Gabby is the most sensitive out of all of us, except for that she maintains an air of detachment. No. Oh, I love that. Sophie seems to be the epitome. No, let me tell you. Uh-oh. You guys are in trouble now. You got that completely wrong. Okay. You. All right. Tell it. Tell us, Gabby. It's because I can't feel those emotions. When I should feel those emotions, I just feel numb. <laughs> I know it's weird, but <laughs> I don't feel anything. All right. So, Sophie, are you ready for yours? No. Sophie seems to be the epitome of living in in one's world. So I don't know if that's good or bad. Already knowing her light cannot be swayed. I believe that too. I don't know what any She of looks is. above for her channel. So it's clear and pure in intentions. Less processed, more direct from source. Instead of removing her emotions, she removes her worldly way of being. I think I do that and I think Sophie does I that too. I don't know what any of that means. It means that you just are you, no matter what. You, If something comes into your world and stresses you out, you remove that instead of removing Sophie. Oh yeah. Like, isn't that so good? Who is this person? Devin Jones, we love you. Standing out amongst the rest will be easy and rather enjoyable as she ages. All right, are you guys ready for Laura? Okay. You have a short one. Laura and Sam are lucky, as are their children, with off the charts awareness levels for the average Canadian, exemplary reflect of being raised with the word of God in mind. The universe speaks back. Well, I love that. That's such a good comment. Why did it get taken out? Okay, so here's a good one. So I like some, these are all of our negative comments, the ones that have been, um, that YouTube refused to put on our channel. Um, so someone said, have you tried putting colored rubber bands in Finn's mane to help show Sophie more of a friendly reminder of where she needs to keep her hands to help keep them steady? Or maybe a knot or vet wrap to avoid having the rain go slack, then loose, then slack again. Yeah, that is such a big she issue for us. She had a martingale, but then she doesn't ride with it. Though. Yeah, why don't you ride with your martingale? Because he does not need it. Oh. And I kind of does some days. All right. Well, I mean, some days. But... I, I agree. I think that is such a good idea. Maybe I will. I'll get some of that. If I can remember, I will bring that to the barn with us. 
Um, if she had something to grip onto, I feel like it would help her connection. She's having to think of so much and that if you broke that part down for now, she'd be able to focus more using the leg, etc. She's doing awesome and the same thing happens to me all of the time where my trainer will tell me what to do and I look around like, what? <laughs> Keep at it, Sophie. You're doing great. Thank you so much. That's actually a really, really good com uh, comment. Not a hate comment at all. But I definitely agree with that. And Brenda's been trying to get her to do that. But I think that if she had like, if I got two elastics and made two little handles and fins main pew, she could just grab onto that and and we'd be good please stop buying horses you constantly buy unsound horses or horses with issues you need to stop do you know any horse we or? haven't bought a horse in a long time yeah a year you guys it's been a year um do you do we know anybody's horses that don't have issues do you guys know any like any of our friends any of our lesson ponies like four of the lesson ponies are lame right now Finn. um yeah, Finn never has problems. Finn, he runs away from danger before it happens. Yeah, like Finn never has a problem. But very rarely, like all of our friends that own horses, they have in and out. It's always an in and out thing. There's abscesses. There's, there's always something. All of our friends, like everybody that we know with horses have problems. We know, we have friends that have horses that they do completely differently. Like very, very, very high end. And they still have issues sometimes. Like... Um, we have horses, they're outside, they're in a big field, and yeah, we have the regular flow of horse issues just like everybody else does. Warning! Warning! If you're reading this, all of their videos are clickbait. Trust me. <laughs> she just does not watch the videos far enough. Damage. Yeah, and that's one thing that we found too. A lot of people who complain about our titles don't watch the whole video they just watch and most it, people comment before even watching the video yeah and and that happened that has happened to me before too i was watching a video once and it was something i really wanted to watch like i really wanted to see what they were talking about in the video and i didn't want to watch the whole video and i skimmed and skimmed and skimmed and i never found the spot where they were talking about it and then i was like oh, that is like just a total lie but then i had to remind myself like i didn't even watch the whole video so i obviously missed it obviously it wasn't as big of a part of the video as i thought it was going to be but if you don't watch the video and you don't understand or you don't understand where the title came it's okay so this girl says here's my personal opinion are you ready personal opinions are usually scary here's my personal opinion whether you take it or you leave it she knows an amazing horse. At the level you are currently competing at, I think he could honestly keep doing it. With some better training and him not going lame every two weeks, I think he could do the Silver Series and eventually start pinning with hard work. And I agree. I agree. Gabby and I, like we've talked about this. You guys, I have a video coming out soon, like I told you. I even told our, our chiropractor, our equine chiropractor, all the plans I have for Chino because she knows Chino. And she said that she thinks that our plans, everything that I have figured out and planned for Chino. She thinks that we have an amazing plan set up and she wouldn't do anything differently. And she's a, she's a vet and she said the same thing. And also she was here just on Friday and the last two visits that she's been here, she said that Chino has been in the best shape of his life <laughs> because he's not being ridden. So he, she said he's loving what he's doing. His body is in great shape. He seems like good and he's doing well. It's, and is not even lame that much. It's always just a little teeny tiny thing. Like, like something so minor and usually it's pulled shoes but we agree like we've talked about this a lot and i've like gabby could just say you know what i'm just tired of chino i just want to go with riding this new horse or leasing this new horse or bring chino home let's just let him stay here and figure him out um she believes in chino like we all like i think chino is nicer than finn like personally for what gabby wants he's like a total hunter type or or like a equitation type but i think he could do it too i just am not so sure that chino wants to do it and i know it took us three years no two and a half years to figure finn's head shaking out and i know we're gonna find figure out chino too i know that we will and i think he's amazing we have not thrown in the towel for chino and we're gonna we're letting god guide us you guys like Everybody just wants to, especially when you make daily videos, people just want an answer right now, today. There is no answer today. Like, we have to wait and figure it out. Like, we have to just let the process happen and, and figure out what happens. This commenter, who I love, I love this lady, but she says, and I don't think this is necessarily a hate comment, but she says, Elizabeth is so pretty and speaks like a young adult. I agree completely. I love that kid and not a whiny baby. <laughs> 
what she's referring to that speaks like a whiny baby. But she says it's refreshing to hear. Bad buddy. I guess he had his fill of kids that day. So who do you think she's talking about who talks like a whiny baby? Me. <laughs> so this girl says, I really don't understand why you keep acting like the horses the girls are riding are theirs. There's a difference between riding and owning. The clickbait on this channel has gone too far. So... I don't know. I feel like the girls do ride horses that belong to us. Do do you ride horses that belong to us? I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know, you guys. Okay, so apparently uh, when we did the prank with Gracie and Brooklyn that was just meant to be fun for my grandkids, who obviously knew that it was a prank right from the beginning, um, someone said, go and find your horse, be horse before it gets killed on the road what an inappropriate thing to say to a little girl who has absolutely no control over the state of your inadequate fencing there have been many too many incidences involving your horses getting off property during your time living there and you still want to treat it as a joke yeah it's true not everybody will have the same sense of humor as us it's true that nobody was hurt in the making of that video and it's true that brooklyn took it the way that we intended as fun and just an adventure i guess in truth, not everybody is understanding. Someone else said, Brooklyn's reaction was perfect. She knew you would be freaking out 10 times more if it was true. Uh, Jacob, however, I think is still a little too young to even understand exactly what a prank is, but he's still absolutely adorable. And they love when they come since the ponies get spoiled. Well, that was a nice one. Okay, so this is a really interesting one. This is about Chino too. So a lot of the hate on our chan channel, and I don't mean hate, and as, so I just wanted to um, preface this by saying that obviously hate is not just having a difference of opinion. I just use the catch-all term hate for people saying things in a not nice way, but obviously this is not actual true hate. Um, this girl says, stop putting Chino out in that god-awful field with all the other horses until he is sound and feet are in better condition. Uh, you might think it's better to get out every day like this, but in reality you are prolonging his recovery. Uh, he should be on stall rest, getting hand walked on dry ground for 20 to 30 minutes, twice a day or more. So, uh, then she goes on to talk about like the footing and how bad the trail, how bad the field is and stuff. And I do actually want to talk about this a little because um, when you board a horse where we live, you don't get to just go there and say, okay, this is what I want. It costs a lot of extra effort and time for a board for a barn owner to keep a horse in. And they much prefer you have like an actual reason to keep them in. Just saying, I don't really like him being in the field. It's not conducive to Chino uh, is not a good enough reason. Saying like, oh, our horse might get a stone bruise if he goes in the field is not a good reason. Like things like that happen. And a lot of the things that happen with Chino, our vet feels that him moving around is much better for him because it creates blood flow to his to his feet. I think that there are a lot of other things that we can do to, to help Chino's feet, but I definitely don't feel like keeping him in a stall all the time is is the right thing for him. What do you think, Gabby? He doesn't like being in a stall. He doesn't like being in a stall, but the other thing is that um, I, Storm loved that big huge feel, and I think that, but I agree with you that maybe not every horse loves a field like that. Do you think Chino loves a big huge field? No. No, Chino definitely does not love the field. So, like I said, we're making changes. We're working on things. Everything is a process. We can't just say, oh, Chino has flat feet. We're going to just keep him in a stall. It just does not work like that, unfortunately. And in a lot of ways, we can't just, we can't, everything is a process. That's what I'm trying to say. But anyway, just wait. We're making changes. We're trying to fix things. Um, it is better for Chino to move around because he needs the because he needs the blood flow to his feet. He needs to be moving. He needs to be able to move. He just definitely is not a horse that likes a big field. Though he he'd be happy in just a small field. Okay, so last one, and this one is interesting because this is actually interests me. Um, this lady says that you said you were given hoof boots with Chino when you bought him. Instead of continuing to use them, you ignored this very important precaution to keep him sound. Sad for poor Chino. So this is my question though, like. 
Uh, Finn has hoof boots, so if we were to sell Finn, they would go with him. But Finn doesn't wear them, ever. He only wears them if we go someplace that has like a really rocky trail. So he only wears them for something specific. When we bought Chino, he did not have shoes on. She thought that he should have shoes on. She was about to put shoes on him, but he was doing fine. And he did fine for the first six months of the time that we had him here. But nobody told us that he chino wears those boots all the time and in fact to put those boots on chino instead of shoes and put them out into that big massive field they'd be gone in like a day and we'd never get them back so we don't know that chino is meant to wear those boots 24 7 like i, I don't i i've been asking people nobody can give me a clear answer do horses wear those instead of shoes i i i don't know i honestly don't know like um are you trying to say that Chino should be wearing them all the time? I, I honestly, I know he's had shoes in the past. I have seen pictures of him jumping in the past at shows. He's never had those boots on. Um, we do use them. We have used them whenever we've done like trails on roads and stuff or trails with like a lot of rocks, we've used them. So I'm not exactly sure what that means or or what what you think that we should, like, I, if you're trying to suggest that he can wear them instead of shoes and it would be beneficial, I mean, I'm willing to try that. But I asked our farrier and our farrier said, no way in heck. And I don't know if that's because he's a farrier and he needs to make money or I don't know. But I don't know what that means. I don't know what your comment means. And, and that happens a lot, actually. I don't know what... Because, because sometimes we get comments that refer to something that's not actually happening. Like, um like chino's not always lame like when i say chino's lame i mean we're not riding him because he has a abscess or because he has a lost shoe mostly lost shoes or because he looks a little tight in his back the lesson horses that we ride we ride they ride through all of that stuff but we don't ride chino unless he's a hundred percent perfect everywhere and if we do ride chino gabby's been walk trotting chino off and on through mostly shoe issues um to build up his back end and to build up his top line per our vet's request he needs to be he's he will be a stronger horse when he is physically stronger but we can't get him there because he keeps losing the shoes or then he got an abscess or or gets a stone bruise because his feet are we're still dealing with his feet trying to figure out what exactly he needs to help him with his flat thin feet but anyway that is it the comments are calming down a lot. The hate is not actually really even hate anymore. Like people purposely saying horrible, mean things, a, um, a strong, aggressive things towards us. So thank you guys so much for that. It means a lot. <laughs> but anyway, that is it for today's video. I thought it would be more fun to do a hate video. That was not that fun. Was it that fun? No, it was not that fun. Does it feel weird when people say things and it's so different from what's real? Yeah. It feels weird like we spend so much time treating chino and having him tested because they don't know everything that we do and we don't understand where their perspective is coming from because they don't know everything that we do okay, that is it for today's video um we'll be back tomorrow with another vlog this is going to be a very busy week a very important week a very exciting week we have lots of things to share we have a lot of stuff coming out this week so we'll see you guys back tomorrow with a regular vlog see you guys later Bye. Before I end this video, I just wanted to take a second to tell you guys that one of the ways that we handle aggressive comments or unkind comments or comments that are sent to us that without understanding, without the person understanding the full situation, um, how we handle them is we recognize that when people say unkind things or untrue things or things that they don't fully understand, that it is a reflection on them and not a reflection on us. So I hope that most of you guys can understand that that's what's really helped me recently is to understand that when people say unkind things, it's about them and not really about us. And the same thing is true when I say unkind things because sometimes I do say unkind things. Sometimes I struggle with people. And when I do struggle with people and I do say unkind things, I realize that that person is not a good fit for me and then I change how I interact with them and I take a step back or I leave the situation. So when you say mean, aggressive things or you say things that are untrue or if you say things that are based on things that you're not fully aware of then 
that's a reflection of who you are not a reflection of the person receiving the insult or the bad comment so that's how we handle it that's how we get through it and i hope that just sharing that with you guys will be something that's a catalyst in your life to help you get through all the hate that you receive because nobody is immune everybody always has opinions and wants to share them with you negative or positive and i want you all to have tools in your toolbox that can help you deal with stuff like that so when people say something unkind, it's about them. It's not about you, and you just have to pass over it. Don't you know that you're beautiful?